the African sun rises over the endless golden savanna, bathing the land in warm light. The air is dry, carrying the faint smell of dust and grass. In the shade of scattered acacia trees, a small group of Homo habilis begins their day. They are not yet like modern humans, but their minds and hands are sharper than those who came before them. Their bodies are short and sturdy, their arms strong, their faces still carrying the marks of their ape, like ancestors. Near the center of the camp, two young males crouch over flat stones, striking them with smaller rocks. Each blow sends flakes flying, shaping a sharp edge. These are not random strikes. They know exactly how to hold the stone, where to hit and when to stop. This is skill, learned by watching, practiced over many seasons. With these tools, they will cut meat, scrape hides, and split open bones for the rich marrow inside. A female approaches carrying a small antelope. The hunt has been successful, and this will feed the group for the day. She lays it on the ground and joins two others in cutting it apart. The stone blades glide through flesh and tendon with ease, their sharpness born from the skill of the toolmakers. A child watches closely, memorizing every movement. Learning here is silent, but it is constant. A few meters away, another young one cracks open a nut with a rounded stone licking the sweet center. Others return from the trees with berries and a bundle of dried grass for the fire. The camp is alive with movement. Every member has a task, every action has a purpose. The fire itself is small, just enough to cook and keep predators wary. Smoke curls upward into the bright sky. The shelters are simple, bent branches covered with leaves and animal skins, enough to shield from the wind. Around them, scattered bones and stones mark the evidence of many days like this one. Suddenly, a sharp cry breaks the calm. A juvenile has spotted danger, the golden shape of a lioness crouching in the tall grass. Instantly, the group reacts. Males grab their spears, nothing more than sharpened sticks hardened in fire, but deadly enough in skilled hands. They shout, wave their arms, and throw stones. The lioness hesitates, growls, and finally retreats. In this world, survival depends on quick action and the strength of the group. As the sun climbs higher, the tribe gathers to eat. Meat is torn from the carcass, bones are cracked, and fat is savoured. The strongest eat first, but even the youngest get their share. There is no concept of fairness, only instinct and the understanding that the group must endure together. Later, the elder male sits with a stone in hand, shaping it slowly. He does not speak, but the younger hunters watch him carefully. The lesson is silent to survive. You must learn the ways of stone, fire, and the hunt. As the day ends, the sky turns red and gold. The wind grows cooler. The group huddles together near the fire, sharing warmth. Above them, the stars emerge one by one, shining over the land as they have for millions of years. In this small camp, in this ordinary day, humankind takes another step forward in its long journey through time. Around two million years ago, Homo habilis lived in the open landscapes of East and Southern Africa. They were among the first of our ancestors to shape stones into tools, earning the name Handyman. Their daily life was a constant balance between finding food, staying safe, and keeping the group together. Shelter and camps, their camps were simple and temporary. Shelters were made from bent branches covered with leaves or animal hides. They were built close to water sources and in areas where food was nearby. Camps were not permanent. Once food became scarce or predators came too close, they would move to a new location. Hunting and gathering Homo habilis did not rely only on hunting, they were opportunistic omnivores. Men and sometimes women hunted small animals like antelopes, birds, and reptiles using wooden spears. They also scavenged meat from animals killed by lions or hyenas. Gathering was equally important. Women, children, and elders collected berries, nuts, roots, and edible plants. This mix of meat and plants kept the group healthy and gave them enough energy to survive. Tools and technology, one of the most important skills of Homo habilis was making stone tools. By striking a hard stone against another, they created sharp flakes. These flakes were used to cut meat, scrape animal hides, and shape wood. The leftover cores could be used for pounding or cracking nuts. These simple tools gave them an advantage over other animals. 
They could get to the rich marrow, inside bones, or strip meat quickly before scavengers arrived. Fire and safety, it is possible that Homo habilis used natural fire from lightning strikes, although there is no clear evidence they could make fire themselves. Fire gave warmth at night, helped in cooking meat, and kept predators away. At night, the group huddled together near the flames, with the strongest members taking turns to watch for danger. Communication and social life, they had no spoken language like ours, but they used simple sounds, gestures, and facial expressions to share warnings, teach skills, and coordinate hunts. Social bonds were strong because survival depended on cooperation. Sharing food, protecting each other from predators, and teaching young ones were all vital parts of daily life. Challenges and dangers, life was dangerous and short. Predators like lions, leopards, hyenas, and even crocodiles were constant threats. Injuries could easily become fatal. Food shortages during droughts forced them to travel long distances. Yet, their ability to adapt, use tools, and work together helped them survive in this harsh world. The beginning of human story, Homo habilis marked a turning point in evolution. With their clever hands and sharper minds, they began the journey that would eventually lead to modern humans. Every tool shaped, every hunt survived, and every child taught was another step toward the world we know today. The morning mist hangs low over the grassy plains. In the distance, a column of smoke rises, a sign of life. This is the camp of Homo erectus, living nearly 1.5 million years after their distant relatives, Homo habilis. Their bodies are taller and stronger, their faces more human, and their minds sharper. Their shelters are more organized now. Larger branch frames are covered in animal hides, forming sturdy walls. Some shelters are grouped together, marking the center of the camp. Around this center burns a controlled fire, a skill that has changed everything. Fire warms them in the cold, scares away predators, and cooks meat, making it safer and easier to eat. A hunting party prepares for the day. Spears with hardened wooden tips are stacked nearby. Several hunters check the balance of each spear, while others smear their skin with mud to hide their scent. Hunting is no longer a lucky chance. It is a planned effort. Beyond the camp, women and children gather fruits, roots and nuts. Some carry baskets woven from grass. Children watch the adults closely, mimicking the actions with small sticks and stones. Learning has become more intentional. Skills are passed down with clear gestures and repeated practice. By midday, the hunters return carrying a large antelope, its legs bound with vines. The entire group rushes to help. The carcass is placed near the fire and tools, still made of stone, but sharper and better shaped, are brought out. The meat is cut into portions. The choicest cuts are roasted over the flames, filling the air with a rich. As the sun sets, the group gathers around the fire. Sparks fly into the darkening sky. Shadows dance on the shelter walls as elders tell stories with hand gestures and body movements. Stories of great hunts, dangerous animals, and the spirits of the land. These stories are more than entertainment, they are lessons in survival. In this world, life is still harsh. Drought, predators, and injuries remain constant threats. But with fire, better tools, and the ability to plan and work together, Homo erectus has taken another step toward the future. The night is no longer just darkness. It is a time of warmth, light, and the growing bond of a species on the rise. The wind howls through the snow-covered hills. The air is sharp and cold, biting at the skin. In the mouth of a large cave, smoke drifts into the grey sky, the home of the Neanderthals. Strong, broad-shouldered, and powerful, they have adapted to survive in this frozen land. Inside the cave, a large fire crackles. Its warmth pushes back the cold that lurks outside. Furs from deer besson and mammoth line the walls and floors. Men and women sit close to the flames, repairing clothing with bone needles and sinew thread. Children play with small carved figurines made from antler and wood. The Neanderthals are skilled hunters. Their spears are not just sharpened sticks. Some have stone tips, expertly attached with plant fibers and resin. Early in the morning, hunting parties set out, moving silently through the snow. They track herds of reindeer or wild horses, working together to drive them toward hidden hunters waiting in ambush. By midday, the hunters return with their prize, a reindeer, its body heavy with fat for the winter. 
the group quickly skins it, cutting the meat into thick strips. Some is roasted immediately, the rest is hung to dry near the fire for storage. Unlike earlier humans, Neanderthals take time to care for the weak and injured. An elder with a limp is given the choicest piece of meat. In this cold world, every member is valuable. Evenings are filled with the sounds of voices and the glow of firelight reflecting on cave walls. The elders tell stories, not only with words but also with art. Paintings of animals and hunts decorate the stone walls, symbols of their life, their beliefs, and their connection to the land. Outside, the snow falls again, covering footprints and the remains of the day's hunt. The world is harsh, but inside the cave, the Neanderthals have carved out a place of warmth, safety, and community. For thousands of years, they will thrive in these icy lands, until the arrival of a new kind of human changes history forever. The sun rises over a wide river valley, its waters glistening in the soft morning light. Along its banks, clusters of small huts made from mud, reeds, and wooden frames stand together. Smoke drifts from cooking fires as the first true homo sapiens of this land begin their day. Life has changed. No longer always on the move, these people live in one place for many seasons. Around the settlement, fields stretch out, dotted with early crops. Wheat, barley, and lentils. Simple wooden hoes and digging sticks lie in the soil, signs of the day's work to come. Men and women walk to the fields, some carrying woven baskets for harvesting grain. Others tend to small herds of goats and sheep grazing nearby. Farming and animal domestication mean food is more reliable than in the days of constant hunting, but the memory of the hunt is not gone. Spears and bows still lean against hut walls, ready for when the wild calls. Near the river, women wash clothes while children splash in the shallows, laughing and chasing each other. In the centre of the village, a large fire burns, a place for meetings, trading and telling stories. Around it, skilled hands shape clay into pots, carve bone into needles, and weave cloth from plant fibres. These early Homo sapiens are thinkers and planners. They know the seasons, when to plant, when to harvest, and when to store food for the cold months. They use language to share ideas and pass knowledge to the young. Some gather in small groups to carve symbols into stone or paint on animal hides. The first steps toward written communication. As evening falls, the smell of baked bread and roasted meat fills the air. The people gather around the central fire. Elders tell the stories of ancestors who lived in caves, hunted mammoths, and survived the ice. Children listen wide-eyed, knowing these are not just tales, they are the history of their people. Above them, the stars shine as they always have, but now the humans below are different. They shape the land, grow their food, and build their homes. The long journey from the first stone tools to the first farms is complete, and the great story of civilization has begun. Part 5 Prompt